Well, we need a bit more than this. <laughs> you know what I mean? We might go out in a minute and see what just to see if the wind makes. We're the only uh, uh, fishery that fish un fish under sail in all fashion ways, and that protects the uh, quantities of the shellfish. You know, you get weather conditions; you can't catch them with a, there's no wind. Well, they used to say that, that you would get a spatful when they had a lot of lightning. And I think there's a lot of truth in it. You know, I don't, don't suppose you can prove it, but... Uh. Row, boys, row, row against the tide, boys. Hear the Ewer cry, boys, row. Row, boys, row, we'll catch them on the run, boys. Row until you're done, boys, row. Row until you're done, boys, row. Okay, wait, you sure you want to go? Row until you're done, boys, row. We got an engine, but we aren't allowed to use it. <laughs> we take landmarks, so we know, because the channel's deep out there, and then it goes up again. There's a big channel where they bring the ships up. Which side's a big boy? All right. We only fish October till March, but you still eat oysters in April and September. Eight months. Eight months. So Eight months, but we only fish six months. Don't eat oysters in August. No, we, not, not these, not flat oysters. You do Pacific oysters, or rock oysters, or whatever they're called. It's the first fiberglass oyster boat, and it's been a good servant over the years, so we'll be keeping it for a few more years. Okay, when I first started, there were 34 sailboats. It's like Regatta Day. <laughs> All in the same spot. <laughs> Well, there used to be more rivalry, but now, now things, uh, we've got new uh, legislation and we've got to put down how much we catch. We used to try and keep it quiet, what we caught, so nobody would go there the next day and we would keep it. But now you've got to write it all down for the ministry and all like that. So Queens are nice. They're nice. I'm well, not a big fish either. Well, all these dead shells catch little spat, and then all the oysters grow on the dead shells. That's how you need this to knock them off. Well, that's a queen, but uh, see, they all, all, all oysters are stuck to each other. That's the size of oysters you've got to catch. All right, for any smaller than that, they got to go back. They fall through there. That's queens. But anything smaller than that, go back. He's just hang. Well, they'll all be bagged up for about a week, and then uh, the buyer will come down and he'll take them. They'll be sold to France, mainly France. They like the oysters. Some go to London. You know, you don't get rich at this job, but uh, just well, a way of life. Row until you're done, boys. Row, 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 boys, row. Against the tide, boys, hear the Ewer cry, boys, row, row, boys. The old men knew what they were doing. You learn a lot more off the old men than you do off the youngsters, put it that way. You usually learn how not to do it when the youngsters tell you how to do something. Yeah, yeah back that staysail there, knife, pull them back this way. Go in. There's the knife. That goes across the seabed, and all the shells, oysters, and queens go inside there, inside the valley. 
and there's the knife. Obviously you've got to throw it in the right way, it's got to land like that, way up. Yeah, we dredge up all cannonballs, it's one of the oddest things. Lots of shells from the Second World War. What do you do with a shell when you pull it up? Uh, we just knock, well, we used to knock the ends off them and pour the cordite out. And... You, go, you would defuse them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think they like it now, but they wouldn't do it now, but uh, that's, <laughs> right. that's what we did. Used to bang the ends off them because they're snapped on. Right. Snapped on, and if you tap them around, it, it opens up the shell and then you just tip the cordite out. When we get them off the oyster, oysters off the oyster bed, they've got to go through a purification or what they call now deprivation process. And that takes 42 hours. And that cleans them out of bacteria. They go for ultraviolet light. Uh, whether we sell all them, we don't know. You always got to have more than you want. You know, you don't want to run out. We got uh, 10,000 oysters already been purified, ready to go down. We're, we're the only supplier down at the festival for native oysters anyway. I was 11 years of age when I first started dredging, so I mean, it's a very tough life. Oyster dredging only goes six months, so you have to do another job. So most of the guys are fishing, um, they have other fishing boats as well. When it's force eight gale blowing, it's the time to uh, catch oysters. When everybody else is hiding, we're out there under power catching the oysters. Les is good at what he does, so he likes to be the best and the top man. There were 14 buckets we had last time out. So there, we have 14 of them. So it's mainly non-stop when there's a breeze of wind. Throw one out, pull one in. Throw one out, pull one in. You can tell by people's faces whether they want oysters or they don't. Or whether they ever eaten an oyster or not, by the way they look. I can. Right. Some people hate them, you know? And then some people will come up and have two or three dozen, like, you know? And they love them. <laughs> Lots of times they don't want to do it, and you can get them to do it when they don't really want to do it. It's just the way you react with them. Yeah. You don't eat them? No, I don't eat them, no. No. It's like being in a sweet shop, isn't it? I look after them. I don't like hurting them that much. Back of my back's all right, but lots of people's aren't. <laughs> that's a way of life, that's it, once you... You know, the seasons go quicker and you look after the boat. I've had this one for 40 years. <laughs> 40 years now.
what do you take away from it? <laughs> I haven't found out yet. <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs>